What a complete and utter disgraceful performance from Manchester United today. One win in our last seven games. Six hours and 20 minutes without scoring a goal. Our longest period without scoring a goal. Zero chances or shot created actions, chances created for our striker yet again. But Ten Hag changes our striker for a left winger in Rashford to play striker. Ten Hag is sacking himself. This is the most defeats Manchester United have had before Christmas. Christmas in the season since 1930. The most defeats Manchester United have ever had in a calendar year came in 1989 when we lost 20 games. We've lost 20 games in all comps in 2023. We're breaking records, embarrassing records. We don't look like scoring. We could have played for another 10 hours and we wouldn't look like scoring. Yet the manager is doing it to himself. I am sorry, but Rasmus Hoyland has zero chances created for him. If you blame Rasmus Hoyland, you're an idiot. If you're criticising Rasmus Hoyland, you are a foolish. I mean, you can be critical of him, you can be critical of his movement. But if you think Rasmus Hoyland is a problem, you are silly. Rashford comes on for Hoyland and within the first 20 minutes, Rashford had five touches coming on for Hoyland. Our centre forward, who is one of our best players that showed in the Champions League, he can score goals when service is provided for him, has zero service, doesn't have a single shot today, has nothing to do today. But you take off our centre forward for a winger instead of taking off our underperforming wingers for a winger. Rashford's best position is a winger. We know what Rashford's like at striker. Garnacho was raw. He's like Ronaldo when he was young. He'll have good games, he'll have bad games. Garnacho was having a bad game. But instead of taking Garnacho off, he's having a bad game for Rashford, putting Rashford in his best position, he would likely create a chance for Hoyland because Rashford's a lot better on the left. You just change our striker. But if you change our striker and nothing else about the system... And you wonder why we're still not creating chances for Rashford when he's playing striker. I don't know what to say. You're sacking yourself, Tenog. I'm trying to back this manager. I'm trying to back Tenog as much as I can. But it's like common sense. We are not playing well. We're creating nothing for our striker. But you think changing our striker for Rashford, playing Matt of position, will somehow win us the game. But when we're not creating anything for our striker anyway, and there was nothing created for Rashford. I don't get it. Garnacho was having a poor game. But what frustrates me is it's six hours and 20 minutes of football without scoring a goal. Six hours of football, we don't look like scoring a goal. We could play for another six hours. I don't think we'll score a goal. I don't think we'll even score versus Aston Villa. But what I have to see here, and what I have to question, is why is that the midfield change? We're persisting with Bruno Mutomene, but we're playing Bruno in a deeper role, not in his natural role, to accommodate Mutomene. You wanted Mutomene sold in the summer. You tried to force Mutomene out in the summer, but all of a sudden you're compromising Bruno, playing Bruno out of his best role, making Bruno be more defensive and not unlocking Bruno's best traits because you want Mutomene to be this box crashing midfielder that doesn't have the bottle. You're then making Maynard defend and do absolutely everything on his own. And Maynard had a really good game, bar that one lapse in concentration, which I won't blame Maynard for. He's 19. He was still our best player. He still had a brilliant game. He just made one small error, which he got no help for from any of the other players. But Maynard has to play on his own. Bruno has to play out of his main area to accommodate McTominay, who, when he doesn't score, does nothing. But he won't take McTominay off. This is four games in a row where McTominay has done nothing. We've not scored. We've not created chances. McTominay's had the least touches out of pretty much every player on the pitch, bar Rasmus Hoyland in the last four games out of the players that played the 90 minutes but he keeps his position even though he does nothing he doesn't help out defensively doesn't get back doesn't provide anything going forward because no 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 McTominay scores goals the player you wanted gone in the summer you now will not take off he is now Mr Untouchable he's now gonna you're gonna have to change the way Bruno plays and the whole way we're playing because McTominay can score a few goals when he runs into the box yes McTominay can score a few goals but McTominay hinders the team. But you won't take Mutsomini off for Ericsson, which is such a simple sub you could have done in the 60th minute. Every single Man United fan that was watching that game was like, okay, let's take Garnacho off for Rashford. Let's take Mutsomini off for Ericsson. Bish, bash, bosh. We're 50, we're 50 minutes into the game. The game is there that to be won. We've had more possession. We had the best shot. We could have been 1-0 one, one up at half time. The game is in our hands. West Ham just got battered 5-1 by Liverpool. But what are you doing? I have to sit here and I have to be critical of Tenor. What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. You are sacking yourself. Now, I don't want to know to be sacked because I want the board to happen. I want the, the board to change. I want I want I want Murder gone first. Mercer Arnold, the Glazers, they were the, they are a bigger problem than Tenog. These players, as soon as we go one nil up, they're just the ability to give up and lack desire. These players need to be shifted out. The recruitment is a disgrace. Mohamed Kudus, we could have got for 40 million, is 10 times the player Anthony is. 85 million pounds spent on Anthony when our scouts said he was worth 25 million and Mohamed Kudus is there. 
Yes, we don't have Casemiro. Yes, we don't have Martinez. Yes, we don't have Varane. We don't have our three best players last season. Now Rashford isn't scoring. It's basically shown how crap our attack is and there's no there's, there's no quality in our attack. We're not making the most out of Bruno, who will go to Portugal again and drop 10 out of 10s because he's got good players around and playing a system that complements him. You are hindering Bruno's development. You're not playing to Bruno's strengths. You're hindering Bruno. Yes, you've got injuries, but it's to the point where I've backed Tenag. I said, I'm not going to ask for the manager to be sacked till the end of the season because I do not want an interim and I will stick with that. I want Ineos to come and make the big changes. I don't want an interim. I'll have Tenag to the end of the season. But at the end of the season, we may need to sack Tenag if we can see him persisting with this that isn't working. Four games in a row where he's not changed the midfield when we're not creating chances. He just changes the attack and realises that why the attack aren't producing anything. Yes, we're crap in the final third. Yes, the decision making is crap in the final third. Yes, our attackers aren't good enough. Yes, the players in the Man United squad aren't good enough. The attack is not good enough. We've had a lot of injuries. But there's the style and the basic in-game management from Eric Tenag is unforgivable absolutely unforgivable when I do sit here and say maybe we have to assess some options you know maybe we do with Ineos coming in maybe we're going to have to because to be honest I think the most important thing is getting the structure right across the board before we change the manager and getting some of these players out that give out that some of the player attitude is dreadful but with Tenog I can't see it any sort of direction here. I can't see an identity. We've got to recruit for Tenag. What's the play style? What's the identity? You signed Anthony, you wanted Frankie de Jong, but you're playing a way that wouldn't suit how Frankie de Jong plays. You're playing a way that doesn't suit how Anthony plays. You want him at Tomine gone, but you're now playing a style of football that revolves around Tomine. I feel like Tenag doesn't know what he's doing. And I think you can't, if you're Ineos, you can't bat Tenag right now if you can't see an identity or a direction. Yes, the recruitment around Tenog's been dreadful. Yes, Tenog's never got any of the players he needs and he's had to adapt to that. But when you see Tenog making the most basic mistakes in in-game management, like not taking off McTominay, taking off Rasmus Hoyland, playing the same players that are crap. Yes, he's had injuries. Yes, he's had this and that. But where is the direction? Where is the identity? In your sitting here thinking, well, who are we going to recruit for this guy? Because he wanted these players sold. He insisted on players like Mason Mount, but when he was fit, he never played him. It's like, what is Tenog trying to do? It's like Tenog's just putting a team together going, okay, these players score goals, they'll produce me something out of nothing. I mean, we could have played for 10 more hours today and I generally don't think we would have scored. I don't think we would have come close to scoring. We've not come close to winning a game as well. No win against the top nine teams away from home un under Eric Tenog as well. Rashford touched the ball about once since he started playing down the middle in about the first 20 minutes as well. We can't score goals because we can't control the ball. The only player on the pitch that can control the goal is Kobe Mayno. And unfortunately, he made an error today, which resulted in a goal, which is unfortunately what people will talk about. But you have to blame Ten Hag and the coaching staff for this. The subs were awful, tactically awful. There's quality in the team, but we're not using the one or two bits of quality in the team we have. Yes, we have injuries. Yes, we have to change the centre-backs a lot. Yes, we have this. Yes, we have that. But in all three phases of the game, we were dreadful. Yes, we have a lot of problems. Yes, in the final third, we're not good enough. I don't think Anthony's good enough. Garnacho's like uh, Ronaldo in his early days. But it's like, and now Rashford isn't scoring it. It exposes how bad our attack is. And that isn't on 10 for the attack being dreadful. That is on the crap recruitment at Manchester United, where we spent way too much money on someone like Anthony. Could have got Harry Kane, went for an inexperienced striker. I mean, John Merton, and Richard Arnold are a disgrace. And that's why Ineos need to change that before they change the manager, because the quality in attack isn't good enough. But at the end of the day, if Eric Denard had actually implemented a system and started playing some good football and we had a balanced midfield, at least we'd create more chances for the attack and we'd see more of the attack. Anthony was not good enough today. I don't think Anthony's good enough to play for United. He's very predictable. But if we played a style of football where Anthony had runners around him, like he did at Ajax, maybe we see a better Anthony. You wanted Anthony. You wanted you wanted Frankie Dion, but now you're playing a style of football around, around McTominay, who you wanted sold. And I just look at United, and as soon as we went on down, I said, the game's over, we won't score. I said, now we're 1-0 down, it could be, it's more likely West Ham will score again, because every time we go 1-0 down, and this West Ham game isn't an exception, we get worse. As soon as we concede a goal, we get worse. The players giving up again is a disgrace. The midfield runners, again, is a disgrace. The midfield setup is a disgrace. Playing Rashford at centre-forward is a disgrace. Tenog's management today was an absolute disgrace. I felt sorry for Rasmus Hoyland. Yes, he can do a bit better here and there. But this is on the manager as well. Scott McTominay has played 90 minutes in each of uh, uh, his last 13 games for the Manchester United, each of Eric Tenag's last 13 games. He's now become untouchable in the starting 11. Also, captain of Cersei Liverpool, but he offers nothing. And I'm not just going to go on McTominay. The, 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 uh, uh, the quality in the final third isn't good enough. The attack isn't good enough. But we are literally... I don't know what the identity is. I don't know what the plan is from Ten Hag. 
I don't know what he wants to do. We've drawn to, we've drawn to Galatasaray. We lost to Newcastle. We beat Chelsea. We lost to Bournemouth. We lost to Bayern Munich. We drew to Liverpool and we lost to West Ham. I, we're not winning games. We're not conv- play, convincing. If we were losing games, but I was seeing something, I was seeing a style of play fine. But the rest defence is a disgrace. We're not winning games. We're not playing well. We don't deserve to win games. We don't look like scoring. The manager is sacking himself. He really is. And his in-game management is sacking himself. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. We'll be back live tonight. Let's talk about some more details. See you then.